You know, ladies and gentlemen, it's not too often that you get a chance to invite your best friends to appear on a TV show. And that's right, but today that's what I get to experience, Pastor Jay. You all are gonna get a glimpse into the two most amazing people in my life. Their stories are powerful. Head cheerleader and a masterful football player came together and today they stand as my dearest friends in the world. I cannot wait for you to hear their stories of how one came kicking and screaming screaming to a revival, and the other one didn't even realize Christian faith was in his future. What? All of that coming up on Unscripted Faith. Welcome to yeah. Unscripted Faith, Pastor Jay. Come on, somebody. We're going to have some fun today. Well, you know what? I know you're all <laughs> amped up on yes, cloud I nine. Am. Got your buddies here in the house. It's going to be great. Yes. Friends of mine, but very, very close to you. Yes. Uh, we're so blessed to have them yeah. in our life. It's Pastor Zach and Lauren Blair of Hill City Church. They are leading a congregation, but their hearts are unparalleled. They have a heart for the city, a heart for the lost, and above all, they love Jesus. So welcome, Pastor Zach and Yay! Pastor Lauren. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We are so glad to have you. Now, y'all, I'm going to apologize right now because if my volumes get high and you feel like I'm screaming, it's because I am. I I'm am. excited. You <laughs> do elevate each other's like voices anytime Forever. we're around this. Woo. Yeah. Well, listen, real quickly, though, I got to mention this because, you know, a yes. lot of time we read stuff out of prompters. All that was from the heart. I mean, that just moved me. I mean, a little tear came down. I, I held it back. I mean, there was flowing. She just went all off script and everything. She was like, I was like, oh, she just flowing now. So I, you know, there's a there's That's definitely a camaraderie here. Yeah. That's right. Unscripted yeah. faith. You can't have it any other. That's right. That's right. Listen, Lauren, you, I don't know life without oh, you. I, I literally knew you while you were still in your mommy's belly. Yes. And. Zach, you have become a brother to me yes. and it has been such a beautiful friendship. And so I just wanted you guys to share a little bit of your story. Let's start with you, Laura. So you came, you knew Jesus, you were raised in a Christian home, yes. but you came to Jesus yes. kicking and screaming a little bit. <laughs> and share with us. You I sure did, I sure did. <laughs> and I still thank God for that, honestly. Um, yeah, it, life has been a blessing with you in it. You have, you know, been with us in every high and low and just uh, an encouragement, a spiritual sister to me since I was a little girl, you know? And um, um, so I'm just so thankful, so honored to be here. And oh my goodness, yes, I grew up in a Christian home, yeah. great parents, you know, and take us to church. and. Yes but never really knew God, like knew him for myself. He was never personal to me until you, my friend, told my parents, I think worked together yes, with my parents, with parents. Yes. To, to get me to go to Brownsville Revival, which yes. really impacted my life forever. You know, it wasn't all the amazing speakers. I mean, no. the, amaz the, the worship and the speakers were incredible. That was amazing. But it was actually on the bus ride home, hearing teenager mm. after teenager stand up, and share. That's why I love the, the power of somebody's testimony. Yes. Um, like God at work in them. So they would stand up teenager after teenager and they shared about what God did in them and how they were going to live for Jesus. And, and um, one girl stood up and said she wasn't going to be with her boyfriend anymore because he didn't love God. He didn't know God and wow. she knew. And I thought, oh my goodness, if she can do it, I can do it too. So it was the, the power in that moment. And that really, that changed my life forever. I was going to go to um, Slipper Rock to be on the cheer team and life was headed in a certain direction. And two weeks before, I think it was like two weeks before college started, uh, we ended up finding Geneva and we showed up one day and uh, there was a huge rainbow over the school and just felt the peace of God. Like this is where I need to go. And really life really f was, you know, fell into place and God did so much so quick, yes. you know, so yes. fast. So I'm thankful for you being a good friend and consistent. Oh. I remember even my graduation present, I wasn't living for the Lord at all. And yeah. she gave me Jeremiah, Jeremiah yeah. 29 11 poster. I sure did. <laughs> hey, I just, every single thing I gave her for graduation, I was Jack, like, oh, it was, it was wow. a Christian just poster. Just what I wanted. Bracelet, yeah, all right. Bracelet <laughs> signed. Like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, literally I literally went to the Christian bookstore no, and listen, bought every You sure that's did. Right. And it was so sweet. But I like put it under my bed. Wow. You know what I mean? Of like, oh, that's oh, nice that's for nice. Ange, right? 
Meanwhile, two months later, that scripture would really mark my heart and my life forever, mm. you know, because God knew the plans that he had. So yes. forever thankful for that, for that moment. And yeah, so, well, and yeah. Well, you mentioned about Geneva. Yes. There's a little story behind Geneva, ain't yes, there, there, Pastor is. Zach? I mean, I don't know much about it, but I'm hearing Thank some God stuff. Thank God for yeah. Geneva. Tell us yes. about Geneva. Seriously. Yes. Okay, so uh, Geneva, I, I was a, uh, offered a football scholarship to play there, D2 NAIA. And, um, a good kicker at that. Yeah, kicker punter, <laughs> you know, yes. played there. It was, it was fun, you know, part of the team. Uh, I'd love to get a little scrappy, too, you know, put the face mask in somebody's kneecap. Everybody wanted to <laughs> truck the kicker, right? So I found, you know, just put the face mask in the kneecap. They flip over, the, the crowd you cheers, go. you know, that's it was <laughs> good. <laughs> Go. So, you know, get in, get, in, get a little scrappy. But uh, I had grown up that way, you know, a little bit scrappy. I had to yeah. fight for a lot because yeah. I had to endure uh, abuse when I was a kid and I had struggled with a lot of shame, right? And so I was about uh, 12 years old. I had always knew there was a God. I had always wanted to like live for God, you know? And um, I just had questions. I remember asking, I think I was maybe even nine years old. I remember asking my priest at the time about yeah. Einstein's space continuum, time space continuum. You I'm like, hey, if God made us, who made God? Like, mm -hmm. I need to know this. Yeah. And he kind of fumbled a little bit and I'm like, he didn't really think this through, I, <laughs> you know, like, so I was a little bit skeptical, but I knew I needed God. Like I had a void yeah. in my heart because that endor abuse that I endured was going on during that time. I'm getting about 12 years old and my uncle who's like a bodybuilder, man's man. And you know, just, uh, a wonderful man invested in my life and just started sharing the scriptures. He was the kind of guy that like Thanksgiving dinner, he'd be like, ah, you're all going to hell if you don't have Jesus, you know? So he was like real direct, but he was full of love and he invested in me. Um, he took me to a youth group and man, I, f I met God that night, like powerfully. But then I didn't really stay in a good community and that's where Geneva yeah. comes in. I was about 17 years old and you know, I, was, I had gotten myself in a lot of trouble and I was at a really bad place. Um, I wanted to live for God, but I didn't really, I didn't have anybody around me to support mm. me. And I went to, I went to Geneva. I didn't even know it was a Christian school. What the Bible was the logo at the time. I wow. literally just missed that, that. Yeah. missed that detail, right? Yeah, right? I know, I didn't right? Know. Pro Christo yeah. Patria was the slogan. Right. Like, I don't know, what Latin, mean? whatever, yeah. you know, I'm like, okay. For people that are, what is Patricio Cratio? Uh, for whatever. Christ and country, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 right, for Christ yes. and country. And so, you know, that was the mindset uh, at Geneva. And I come there and I'm like, oh, man, what's, what's going on with all these people? They're a little weird, you know, like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, it was funny. Yeah, like they look both ways across the street and run away. That's why I like perceived it in my head. I felt yeah. so uncomfortable. You know, I'm like, why? What is going on here? Nobody swears. Like, what is this? And so uh, I'm in a football meeting in Costa Marco, mm -hmm. just start sharing out of the book of Matthew. And I say, I'll filter it for television. I say, what is this? Some kind of Christian school? And all my buddies laughed. And I'm like, Oh dang, what did I get myself no into here? Wow. What is it? Like, no idea. And then I'm like in the middle of that football meeting though, and I hear the voice of God say, mm -hmm. I'll still have you. Yeah. Mm. And I had known because when I was in that, that um, youth ministry that one night, there was a speaker there, a good friend of mine, Scott Fletcher. He, he said, if anyone feels called, I want you to come up to the front. And I felt like God was just tugging on me to go up to the front. My uncle looks at me, he's like, hey, if I, you feel like you need to go up to the front. I'll go with you. And so my uncle walked up to the front. Wow. Powerful statement. Now listen, I, I had so much shame in my heart, I couldn't even look anybody in the eyes. Scott said, look me in the eyes. I couldn't do it. And he said, pretend like you're looking in the eyes of Jesus. And it was the first time I had looked somebody in the eyes. And so wow. when I'm, you know, I'm sitting in that football meeting, God says, I'll, I'll still have you. I was like, no, you won't. <laughs> like, wow. you know, I started yeah. to find, you don't sure. know what I, no, you won't. And then I, I, I had a good friend who just led me back to the Lord. Right but in that moment, around, I just yeah. felt like I needed to submit my life to Jesus. Yeah. You know? That statement is so mm -hmm. powerful. I'll yes, right. still have you. Yes. And I think about too, Lauren, how the power of the testimony. Yeah. Both of you had these very real moments with Jesus yes. that looked a whole lot like people. Yeah. Them looking in your eyes mm -hmm. and saying, You're worth it. Yeah. My story, your story, he cares. Yes. It's so powerful. Right. And today, you guys have really lived what you experienced. What mm -hmm. brought you to Jesus is now kind of what you're doing in the Pittsburgh region. So, you're pastors of mm -hmm. Hill City Church. And tell us a little bit about that journey and where you are today. Yeah, so we had worked with youth and young adults, and please speak as much as you want. Yeah, I don't no, want to be the, the only no, no, guy. You, you have so <laughs> much in you, Aww, and I just want to validate you. that yeah, because you're yeah. just a gem. We Aww. do things together. We are, we are yeah, team player. Huh? Yeah. Yep. yeah, and so um, I, I 
I started to feel a stir in my heart that mm -hmm. God had a new season for us. We were working with youth and young adults for a long time. And, uh, you know, I'd grown up under a guy named Larry Betancourt. He'd put his arm around mm -hmm. us. He's the most relational pastor. Um, tell me what I want to, you know, what I need to hear, not always what I want to hear, yeah. but it was yeah. always spoken right. in love. Yep, because mm -hmm. that and relationship was there. You it know, was, when that relationship it was so there, it's powerful. Huge. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And he really shaped us to be. Uh, re relational discipleship oriented pastors, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and you know, as you used to know, adult pastor, you know, we're, we're experiencing success in certain ways that people would define success, but I felt like God wanted us to define sex success differently. Yeah. Yeah. And just our value started like, man, we are relational discipleship. Started getting the burden that we couldn't escape. For the individual, mm -hmm. for the one. Right. And we started to reach out to the one, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. I remember, you know, just sometimes where I said, Hey Lord, I think God's calling us on and you were a little nervous. So. I was like, no, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. We started feeling that burden and um, it wasn't until like audibly like heard the voice of God wake me up in the middle of the night and um, it was Isaiah 40 verse three through five and it talked about preparing a highway for God and I'm like, what I, I, I really remember saying, what does this mean? Yes. You know, like God, I, I never had heard God's voice so tangibly. You know, yes. you always know the stirring or God speaks to your heart, but it was so audible. And I said, God, is that you? I went to my closet, I prayed, I said, God, is that really you? And I think it was Matthew 14, 23, I can't remember, but it was when, when Peter was walking out of the water mm -hmm. and he said, it is I, do not be afraid. And I knew right then that God was doing something, that it was time for us to step out of the boat, which was really scary. But when you yes. hear God's voice, you have to go. Oh, and so really this, you know. One of the things we tell young ministers who are like, I feel a call, my wife isn't necessarily there. The conversation I had with Lauren yeah, is like, really I said, helpful. I feel a call to right. this, but I'm not going to talk to you about it because I need you to hear from God. I don't yeah. want to be the one who's only hearing from God. And then you just have to follow me because right. if this doesn't work out, you gave me space yeah. to like hear God's yeah. voice, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 And I wanted to know you, yeah. I know you hear from God. I trust God's voice in you. Right. You know? yeah. So really from then on, we started looking all over really the U.S. like we started going everywhere. Yes. Pittsburgh always had a piece of our heart. Oh, we're Yenzers, like we're we just you know? like, Yenzers. yes, <laughs> Yenzers. we are black and gold. Like this city has our heart. Like we just love it here. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I think yeah. my uncle used to say when I was a kid, like, hey, don't feed them ducks. They got disease. <laughs> you, know, you know, like we're so Yenzers. <laughs> like through. Pittsburgh people? So you were up in, were you in Buffalo? Was I was it? Buffalo yeah. guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The whole Yenzer yes. thing is all yeah. brand new to me. All brand new. Yeah. Wait, listen. Yenzer miracle work on this hoagie. You know, see, we call them subs. Okay. Yeah, subs, there, there we go. Right. subs. Well, one thing I do want to hear about, and when we come back, yeah. I want to hear about how y'all met at Geneva yeah. okay. yeah. as oh, yes. well. So okay. listen, we got more with Pastor Zach and Lauren, but right now we're going to head over to Tom as he continues to highlight the book of Acts in this week's Spirit Walk. My church used to have a sign at the back of the church. And as you walked out, there was a sign that said this, you're entering your mission field. And I always liked that, you know. You may say to me, well, what do you mean, Tom? I'm just going to work. I'm just going to the doctor. I'm going to the store. What kind of mission field is that? Well, it is a mission field. Now, in the book of Acts that we've been studying, they definitely knew they were on mission, that they had a mission field they were going to. But you and I have that too every time we walk outside the church. So let's read about it. In Acts chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, it says this, The teaching and preaching of Peter and John angered the priests, the captain of the temple police, and the representatives of the Jewish sect of the Sadducees. They were furious that the people were being taught that in Jesus there is resurrection from the dead. So while Peter and John were still speaking, the Jewish authorities came to the temple courts to oppose them. They had them arrested, and since it was already evening, they kept them in custody until the next day. Yet there were many in the crowd who believed the message, bringing the total number of men who believed to nearly 5,000. Now, let's talk about this for a second. They knew they were on mission. They knew that they were to preach the gospel. They were proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ and life in Him. What a fantastic thing. But whenever we proclaim the gospel that way, two things are going to happen. The first one is opposition. You noticed people didn't like it. Here was this wonderful news about how we can know God, and yet people don't like it. Well, that happens all around the world. You should think, what's well, good news? Why would anybody be upset? But see, the gospel calls people to account. 
calls people to repent, calls people to change. And that's a difficult thing. People don't like to hear that. And so there's opposition. And of course, the enemy doesn't like that gospel going out either. But in addition to opposition, there are results. And what are the results? The results are salvation. Salvation for people all around them. People that hear, heard them, they respond to the gospel. You know, the gospel is an amazing thing. It has the power of God for salvation, it says in Romans. And when that gospel is preached, yes, there's opposition, but there's also salvation. And guess what? The opposition is there, but the results are worth the opposition. So as you go out today, as you go out bearing Christ, being a follower of Christ, following after him and wanting to share that good news with others, realize that the enemy might throw a few roadblocks in your way. No, you won't be arrested. At least I don't think you will be. But you might have some roadblocks in your way, some anger from somebody or a closed door. But God says, keep doing it. Keep doing it. He's got his hand on the people that will respond. So walk in the spirit today. Have your own spirit walk. And you'll see that God will bring results. Great salvation to the people around you. Well, you know, I love that because whenever there's opposition, there's guaranteed if you stay in Christ to be results. And we're back here with Team Blair yes. that knows all about yeah. how to get results. Yeah. But what I want to know is how did you guys get together in Geneva? Because I know we hear the story of how you got led here, which I think is outstanding, yeah. and your walk to Christ, but you end up at the same college. Yeah. Tell us how y'all got introduced. Well, and I should probably start because yes. when I, the night that I rededicated my life to the Lord, my friend who prayed with me mm -hmm. said, hey, uh, call, your, call your girlfriend real quick. And I'm like, oh, are we going to lead her to the Lord too? And he's like, no, you're going to break up with her. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, dude, sure she's, she's bad news and you know it. And I was like, okay, you know? So, and I knew in that wow. moment he was right. Wow. And so I called her and I said, hey, I just came to Jesus and I have to, I have to break up with you. I, I have to. And so we, you know, there was a further conversation, you know, that we had, but um, he, I, I just said, I'm not going to date anybody. I'm just, I'm just not going to do this. I'm just going to be single. Oh, and, geez. you know, I don't want to ruin anybody's <laughs> life. Like there was a lot of like, yeah, just me and Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, then that, that man who led me back to Jesus um, and told me to break up with that girl, his, I met his girlfriend and she's like, I'm telling you, there's this girl that I think you're going to marry. And I feel like God spoke to me that you what? guys are going to marry each yes. other. Thank and God she was adamant. Friends that I would meet Lauren. And I was like, no, 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 I, Aaron, I don't want to meet anybody. I don't want to date anybody. And she said, once you see her, you, you probably will want to date her. And I'm like, well, I'll look, at, I'll, you got a picture of her. And we, back then we had the guide. You remember oh, the guide? Yes. You could get everybody. Yeah, you had a phone. Oh yeah, no, yeah, no phone. Like, yeah, yeah, like, like your little pictures? Oh, no. Yeah. You didn't grow up when there was Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, I forgot. Oh, y'all young people. Oh, y'all yeah, 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 young folks. I'm sorry, that's right, I forgot. You got it. So I look up, I look up in the guide and I see a picture I'm like, oh. Oh, okay. I mean, I'll meet her. I'll meet her, right? <laughs> I don't know. You want to say anything? Yeah, else? and I was at a moment where I was just like not, I was like just waiting on God's timing. I hadn't dated too many people, but I, I dated a Christian who was a really good guy, but I felt a little bit unsettled in my heart. I remember going to our church service and I saw a couple in front of me and they were just worshiping God together. And I'm like, whoa. Like how amazing, and our relationship wasn't like that. It was kind of just, mm -hmm. you know, just doing the whole thing. You know what I mean? Just the Christian thing, going to church and stuff. Great guy. But God, I felt like in my heart, I said, oh God, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. Like, I just like, that's what I want. I want Team Blair. I didn't know, but that's yeah. what I want. And I just felt like God said, that's what I want to give you. And so I ended up uh, just talk, having a really good conversation with that guy. We broke up and like maybe six months later, I am technically a year older than Zach, which he rubs in my face continually, like all the time. But the cougars, <laughs> the cougars he's two years older yes. and that month outlasts like, all year. Wow, you're just so old. You know what I mean? However, yeah. so I was at school already and Aaron, so Aaron and Matt were the couple and I cheered with Aaron and he played football and Aaron's like, there's this football player. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. football no. players, no, right? Yeah, no, I, yeah. not doing it. She's like, no, you really need to meet him. Like, I really think you do. And so we walked down to the football, um, the football hill. And I remember peeking in on the field, looking down, I'm like, you mean the kicker, the cute kicker? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And she was like, yeah. And she's like, and he got saved. Like, he loved you. So I'm like, oh, okay. 
And so literally we walked down on the field, right? Yeah. And then. Oh, it wasn't very magical. I just threw you a ball. But I'll tell you what, I threw you a football. He threw me the football. I was like, hey. He was she like, chucked hey. it back at me. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I want to spend my time dad, with this. My dad taught me how to throw. When she threw a perfect spiral right That's back right. at me. I was like, all right, here we go. Yeah, this is yeah, Andrew, yeah, this is real. Go. Oh, yeah. 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 That's yeah. right. She yes. can cheer, but she, she can also play. She stepped with the same foot she threw with. If she did this, I'm like, this isn't going to work out. She chucked it right back at me. And I'll tell you what, I used to bet linemen. I'd say, hey, I bet my girlfriend can throw further than you, right? <laughs> I'd win money all the time, you know. She, she threw it. She had 45 yards. Right, 45 right, yards. Right, 45 right. yards. Yes. Yes. She had. Yes. She could chuck. Yeah. Huh, Ann. We, we like the. That's, that's right. That's, that's we a like not the exaggeration. No, no, no. But the, the, the wow. issue is she'll throw the same speed whenever you're two feet away. <laughs> that, I just <laughs> don't tell people. That's going to be a problem. <laughs> you know? But anyways, that's how we met. That's and then wow. we just began to, you know, build a friendship. And we just knew it was special. It was a God ordained yeah. like only you yes. know he wrote our story really he he really did so yep. yeah that's did how God we met. like show Aaron and that did they he show them that like in a dream or how did she know that and did she create a business for <laughs> others out here looking <laughs> No, she just Aww. said, God told me. That's yeah, it. She and then really and Matt like it was... was very adamant. He's like, Aaron doesn't just say that. He's yeah. like, I'm telling you, she heard from God. Yeah. And he wow. was, you know, he's so very matter of fact them. type person. Yes. You know, I really had a lot of trust for him. So. Yeah. Well, I love y'all's vibe. Amazing. I mean, yes. I do. I think you guys got a phenomenal amazing. vibe. I, you love your wife. You love your husband. Aww. And you guys are in ministry together, which yes. is yes. not always the case. Right. How do y'all make it work? Team Blair, how's it so successful? Yeah. Five kids, y'all doing it well. Amazing yes. people around us, really yeah. amazing people. people. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we're both a little bit strong-willed. We so are. We, that was, it was a challenge. We had to learn some lessons. Yeah, well, there was one time where Lauren, <laughs> Lauren taught, for the context of the story, Lauren taught uh, special needs students, right? And so we start working together. And Lauren's like, hey, Zach, you remind me of some of my students. No, I did not <laughs> say that. No, but you said, like, hey, you have a hard time staying on task here. Yes, you did. And so I, I said, no, but a hard time yes, on you're task. like, come on, I have to help you stay. No, but for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. but what you're saying. I would help you. You got to hear my heart, not <laughs> my words, leave, right? Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, her heart. I knew her heart. She's like, listen, I think you might have ADD, right? And I'm like, well, yeah, that's probably, that's probably true. And so she was very, her gifting is very, like, I could see this. I can push it across the finish line. Yeah. I'm really great with it. She's really great with the last 25%. I'm really good with the, the first 75%. Yeah, so, that so I'd get 75% here and I'd be like, okay, I want to move on to the next thing. And I'd be like, and well, Lauren, let's just finish this. Well, let's finish then, it. Yeah. Let's finish it up. And yeah. that was the heart of it where we start right. moving forward. And it's right. like, oh, that's your gift and that's my gift. And you really called that gift in, in me because I honestly thought for the longest time pastor's wives were supposed to be like in the background or just kind of like unseen or like, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know, wow. I didn't know, yeah. but Zach, ever since we were 18 or 19, I was 19, you were 18, you would call out the gold in me. Like you yeah. would say, Lauren, like you're really, I want you to exhort or I want you to share. And I'm like, That's oh, no, awesome. no, 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 like, no, 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 I want you to do this. So you would always call out that, that oh, gold yeah. in me yeah, and absolutely. like really just, but it's been a journey to like work together. But now I think that trust is just so deep. Like we've seen yeah. each other work through so much, you know what I mean? And yes. we're surrounded by incredible people who are, just amazing, yeah. but um, yeah, I think just working through. I think you have given me confidence and I've right. given you confidence, assurance, yeah. like yeah. No, you're on the right path. Yeah. But I think that's so yeah. huge though, because what you guys said about the journey and the process and when you can uh, celebrate yeah. the strengths in right. one another and admit your weakness and realize, right. I love what you guys said about right. the 75, the 25 right. and all yeah. that. That's what makes the world go round right. and makes the marriage a success because everybody operates in their strengths and realize their weaknesses. Yes. Exactly, yep. right, yep. exactly. Yep. Yep. And you always say love people for who they, for who they are. Yeah. You know, honor, yeah, no, honor people for who they are, not for who they aren't. And that's I think, right. Ange, that's what right. we, that's you it. know, yeah. right. we, we formed that in the early days of Hill City, talking yes. about honor, culture of honor. Right. You know? Yes, but yeah. I, and I think that's what's so powerful is that you didn't dismiss who she was, but brought yeah. her into he the totally fold. Did. And yes. because of he that, how much enough. greater there you go. He, he was, was secure, secure enough. enough. Yeah. Woo. And he does that That's actually for Everyone. everybody around him. Oh, yes. Awesome. Honestly, it's who he is. Yeah. He, he's so secure in who he is when you're secure as a leader. That's the truth. You don't care. Everybody mm -hmm. around you can shine as much as. That's right. Right? That's it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sorry, inched over. But no, yeah. that yes. was it. That was yeah. it. Listen, there is so much more we want to get into with Pastor Zach and Lauren. So stay with us and we'll be back in 60. God is doing a new thing. Be ready for it. With your best gift today, request Prophetic Reset, a powerful resource by prophetic leader and pastor Joshua Giles. You'll discover a 40-day journey unlike any other, one that will reposition you under God's powerful anointing, deepen your relationship with Him, and propel you forward. 
Through empowering scriptures, biblical insights, and prophetic tips, you'll discover how to reactivate your spiritual gifts and faith, release the old to seek him anew, rest your mind in his counsel, and hear his wisdom for your next season. Even more, you'll witness his word manifest in your life and return to his promises for you. Ask for Prophetic Reset when you give in support of Cornerstone Television today. Every gift helps us to spread the gospel through Christian programming. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Welcome back to this conversation with Pastor Zach and Pastor Lauren Blair of Hill City Church. I have a question. We were talking about honor and you all do this exceptionally well. I know I wouldn't have stepped out in ministry if it had not Aww. been for you guys seeing the gift of God on my life. And so I owe so much so to evident. you and I could go on so and on and on about you. But there are not many leaders who feel comfortable mm -hmm. pushing others forward. Yeah. What is the key? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, our job as leaders is to bring out the, <laughs> bring out the gold in people. Yes. Every person has a unique calling, and when you see that in, on the inside of them, and mm -hmm. it's not about it's not about our name, it's not about the name of our church, nope. it's about the people, it's about the right. person right. who's right there. Yes. Look at God used. Do you know? There's gold in everybody. We need to bring out the gold of people. Really, he's taught me that. You've taught me a lot about just knowing who I am as a daughter of God yeah. yes. and just being secure. That when, when one of us wins in the kingdom, we all win together, sure. you know? And we try to teach our kids that. And um, <clears throat> just being secure in who you are. And honestly, like, when you get better, when I see you walk in your purpose, it encourages me yes. to keep chasing after God and, like, go after all that he has. So, you know what I mean? So I think it's just... You've taught me a lot about that though, how to honor people yes. and like allow them just to, I just think it's amazing. So I've learned that a lot. Well, really. plus so being a secure leader is so important because <laughs> if you are secure, you need a team. Yes. yes. Right. So you guys That's have right. built this team and now you've got a team around right. you guys, which right. is why y'all doing big things, getting ready to yes. build out there in Robinson. Yeah. It's because yes. of what God is doing. And it starts with a man though, a good man. Yes. Because everything starts, I believe, with the men. And when you yeah. pour into yep. a woman, yes. she becomes what she needs to become. Yep. The church becomes what it needs to become. And you guys are just a model of what Christianity and a Christian home and yes. Christian leader should be. Thank you. Yes. you really are. So much. Thank you. We are so thankful, so thankful for you all, Aww. for your lives, for your ministry, for what you're doing in this city and what you've done in my life and continue to do. Forever grateful for a brother and Same. sister like you guys, Aww. truly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Y'all got to, y'all got a glimpse, okay, into my world a little bit. We, we kept it a little bit tame for, for you guys. But I am so Appreciate thankful, it. and I know, Pastor Jay, you have people in your life like Pastor Lauren and Zach, and I think those people truly are what draw us closer to the Spirit of God and allow us to see what heaven's going to be like. Oh, that'll go. If you don't have the right people in your world and you don't have people that can develop you and right. grow you and you don't have that, as they mentioned, that one-on-one -on -one discipleship, yes. which I think is lost in the body yes, of Christ now, right. we need to get back to that. Yep. Yep. That's what really causes us to flourish. Of course, I have those people as well. Yes. We hope that you have those people too. And if you don't, find yourself here at Cornerstone. Get better connected here and to your local church. God has good purposes and plans for you. Yeah. He thinks you're worth it all. And that's why he paid it all for you. God bless you. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.